நைன்த் ஸ்டாண்டர்ட் சிவிக்ஸ் ஃபிஃப்த் லெசன் லோக்கல் செல்ஃப் கவர்மெண்ட் In this lesson, we are going to see about the rural and urban local governments and about 73rd and 74th Constitutional Amendments Acts of 1992. Then about development in local self-government in Tamil Nadu. This is what we are going to see in this lesson. What is local self-government? it means local self government or the institution that look after the administration of an area or small community like village town or city local self government it means it is the institution that look after the administration of an area like small community like village town or city Local cell government operates at the lowest level of the society. It works the, at the grass root level, close to the people, touching their everyday life. So this is what the activities are done by local cell government. That is, it works at the grass root level, close to the people, touching their everyday life is done by local cell government. There are the historical records of references to local self-government under Mauryan administration. Lord Ripon was the father of the local self-government because he laid the foundation of the local self-government in the modern times. Under the Government of India Act 1935, Provincial Autonomy, it means self-ruling, was introduced this act came into force in 1937 in the provinces where the congress formed its government rural development received special attention by the government it was an essential part of gandhi ji's programs that is panchayat raj institution would be built from village to the highest level this is what the local administration we'll see about lord ripon lord ripon removed the obstacles in the sphere of local self government by his resolution of 1882 he passed resolution in 1882 through that he removed the obstacles in the local self government he led a series of enactments in which larger powers of the local self government were given to the rural and urban bodies so under the head of the lord ripon he gave important to the local self government in the rural and the urban bodies important features of the 73rd and 74th constitution amendment act passed in 1992 we are going to see about the important features of the 73rd and 74th constitution first one panchayats and municipalities will be institution of self government so panchayat and municipalities are the institution of self government second one grama sabhas that is villages and ward committees that is municipalities comprising that is under the self government grama sabha and ward com- committees included in the local self government then third one three tier system of panchayats that is village level taluk level and district level third one three tier system of panchayats under the three tier system it means like village taluk and district level now fourth one seats at all levels that is like three tiers levels filled by district elections even in the village taluk and district levels filled by the di- levels of the seats filled by the direct elections seats reserved for now fifth one seats reserved for chair persons of all the panchayat at all levels also be reserved in proportion to their populations so seats allotted for according to the 
proportion of the population. If it is higher population, the seats will be increase. Allot, allotment will be increase. Or if the population is less, the seat will be allot for the less number of uh, seats. Then, next one, one third of the total number of seats reserved for women. One third of the total number of seats reserved for the ladies. Then, uniform five-year term. So, uniformly, the local self-government election will be conducting once in five years. This is what the important features of the 73rd and 74th Constitution Amendment Act, which was passed in 1992. Salient features of the, that is important features of the Tamil Nadu Panjayat Raj Act 1994. That act are as follows. Like first one, a three-tier system. Second one, Grama Sabha. Third one, Establishment of Election Commission. Fourth one, Constitution of Finance Commission. Fifth one, Reservation of Seats for SCSTs. It depends upon their population. Then sixth one, Constitution of District Planning Committees. These all should be created by the Tamil Nadu Panjayat Raj Act in 1994. Village Panjayat. Local governments which are functions in villages are called Village Panjayat. The President and Ward Members are directly elected by the people. And their terms of office is 5 years. District Collector as the Inspector of Village Panjayat. Village Panjayat are constituted in each and every village wherever the population is above 500. This is what the Village Panjayat system. That is, President and Ward Members are directly elected by the people. Second one, their office, that is term of office is 5 years. Third one, district collector act as the inspector of village panchayat. Fourth one, village panchayat are constituted in each and every village wherever the population is above 500. This is what about village panchayat. Now, what are the duties or functions of the village panchayat? That is first one, supply of drinking water. Second one, maintenance of street lights. Third one, maintenance of roads. Fourth one, maintenance of village libraries. Fifth one, maintenance of small bridges. Sixth one, granting permission to the housing plots. Seventh one, maintenance of drainage. Eighth one, construction of group houses. Ninth one, cleaning of streets. Tenth one, Maintenance of burial grounds. 11th one, maintenance of common lavatory facilities, that is toilet facilities. These are the arrangements should be made by the village panjayat. So that is, this is their duty of the village panjayat. Revenue of the village panjayat. Village panjayat was only... Local government which was empowered to levy taxes or collect taxes in the three-tier system of village panjayat. In the three-tier system it means grama panjayat, block samiti and jilla parishat. So by these systems have to collect the taxes from the people. So what are the taxes they used to collect? That is property tax, professional tax, house tax. Taxes for connection of drinking water, land tax, taxes levied on shops. So these are the ta uh, taxes collecting by the village panjayat. Now meeting of Grama Sabha. In each and every village, the people living within its jurisdiction will be the members of panjayat. The president of the panjayat will preside over its meeting. That is, president start the meeting. In the meeting of the Grama Sabha, the income, expenditure and the beneficiary of the schemes in the villages are discussed. 
so in each and every village the people living within the jurisdictions will be the members of panchayat the president presided over the meetings in the meeting they used to discuss about the income expenditure and beneficiary of the schemes in the villages then when does the meetings conduct or meet together that is january 26 yearly four times in a year they used to meet together that is grama sabha meeting will conduct in june 26th may 1st august 15 october 12 that is january 26th republic day may 1st labor day august 15 independence day october 2 gandhi jayanti so in this time yearly four time they used to conduct the meeting in the meeting they con- uh, they discuss about the beneficiary of the schemes and income and expenditure of the grama sabha this is what they used to discuss discuss in the meetings historical origin and development of local self government in tamil nadu tamil nadu has a long history of local self government that is narrated in the uttramayru stone inscriptions a parantaka chola one parantaka chola one in kanjipuram district village republics rich speak during the reign of cholas this village council had a effective link with the chola rulers that is kudavole murai was the name of the secret ballot method exercised to elect members of the village councils panchayat union it means group of villages panchayat union is formed by the group of villages members of the panchayat union are directly elected by the people the chairman of the panchayat union is chosen from among the members what are the functions or duties of the panchayat union there are eight functions that is the supply of drinking water first one maintenance of village health center second one third one maintenance of roads fourth one establishment of maternity homes fifth one establishment of public fairs it means like trade fairs uh, then a sixth one establishment of veterinary hospital seventh one maintenance of social forest eighth one repairing the primary school buildings these are the works have to do done by the panchayat union panchayat union it means group of the villages now the district collector planning officer concerned block development officer or empowered to supervise the developmental functions of the panchayat union that is these are the works that above said works have to watch over by the district collector planning officer concerned block development officers have to inspect all the duties whether they are doing properly or not now district panchayat a district panchayat is constituted in each district one district panchayat is constituted for every 50000 people and the ward members are directly elected by the people the chairman is elected among the members and his duty is for 5 years he has to work for 5 years now functions of the district panchayat first one advising the government about the developmental scheme of the village panchayat and panchayat union then second one supervising the functions of the district planning commissions till this we have seen about the local uh, that is village local government now we are going to see about urban local government under lo- urban local government town panchayat municipality corporations are there now we'll see one by one town panchayat more than 10000 people live is called a town panchayat members and president of the town panchayat are directly elected by the people there is an executive officer to look after the administration of the town panchayat their period is for that is duty is for 5 years 
he is appointed by the government town panchayat that is more than 10000 people which is called as a town panchayat members and president or the of the town panchayat are directly elected by the people five years of their term of office and he is appointed by the government now we'll see about municipality the area where more than 1 lakh of the people live is called municipality previous one town panchayat more than 10000 people but in the municipality more than 1 lakh of the people is called municipality the members and the chairman of the municipalities are elected directly by the people and their ta- term of office is 5 years sir municipal com- commissioner is appointed by the government to an- administer the municipality now corporation municipal corporation or established in big cities where the city has many lakhs of population so municipality more than 1 lakh of the people but in the corporation more number more lakhs or many lakhs of people is constituted is called as the corporation the municipal com- commissioner is the administrative officer the mayor is the chairman of the corporation and their term of office is for 5 years then the municipal commissioner will be the person from the indian administrative service that is ias officer all the decisions of the corporation council will be implemented by the ias officers he will be assisted by the office of the corporation so our chennai corporation building which is called as the in the period they constructed in the period of the british viceroy rip and lot rip and so the building is called as rip and building election to the local governments in tamil nadu the state election commission conducts the elections like general elections the seats allotted for the sc st candidates and also for the women in the proportion to the populations now problems and challenges facing the local self governments there are the four main problems which is facing by the local self governments first one lack of clear demarcations of powers and functions of the local bodies it means they did not explain about the functions and func- uh, powers and functions of the local bodies they did not mention exactly about the functions and powers of the local bodies second one allocations of funds and needs assessment are not matched that is funds and needed assessment are not suited third one role of caste class and religion in decision making at the local self government then fourth one poor accountability of elected members and officials at the grass root levels of democracy there is no correct accountable of the elected members and officials at the grass root levels these are the problems are facing by the local self governments